He had helped organize a CBS television broadcast around the Robertson panel's conclusions. This was a famous broadcast narrated by Walter Cronkite. And we also know, of course, that CBS at this time had a very close working relationship with the intelligence community. So it was not at all surprising that if the CIA wanted to debunk UFOs, it would appeal to organizations such as CBS to help them do that. And this letter really establishes that the Robertson panel's recommendations were being carried out at least as late as 1966, which is 13 years after the recommendations were first made. Why do you think that so much effort has been put into uh, discrediting and misinformation and psychological warfare to keep the media and the public at an arm's length distance from what leaked government documents call extraterrestrial biological entities? Well, that's really the $64 million question that, you know, the question everybody would, would like to have the answer to. I think initially there was quite obvious concern expressed in a lot of internal government documents about the surveillance of U.S. military installations, nuclear weapons facilities, and so forth by flying saucers or UFOs. And so there was naturally, in the minds of the military establishment, there was a concern about potential invasion by some unknown force. And in fact, early on, President Eisenhower actually made a denial on the front page of the New York Times saying that the world was not being invaded by flying saucers from outer space. So it was clearly a topic of great concern at that time. And on up into the up into the mid-1970s, the flying saucers or UFOs were still flying over our nuclear weapons facilities and interfering with ICBMs and that sort of thing, according to uh, military personnel. So there does seem to be this kind of issue about surveillance and interference with military facilities. There may be other issues as well having to do with economic considerations, military hardware considerations. You can add animal mutilations and human abductions to the list that the government would have been so concerned that no one know about until they had control over it. And we're talking in May of 2007, and the human abduction syndrome is still reported, and so are worldwide bloodless animal mutilations. Yep, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I think the defense establishment wants to project an image of being in control, and they're obviously not in control (laughs) and haven't been for quite a long time, and I think they don't want to confess that to the public because that's the source of their power. And I suppose another aspect is just concern about what the public reaction would be if they came out and said that, yeah, these things are going on and there's really very little we can do about them. Are you convinced that the presence of more than one extraterrestrial or some kind of non-human intelligence is at work on the planet now and has been perhaps for millennia? Well, it looks that way to me, Linda. You know, I've read just uh, many, many thousands of these accounts from what I think are credible sources, and I don't think you can come to any other conclusion that there's some form of intelligence uh, more advanced than human beings that has been involved with our affairs for quite a long time. I think we first became aware of this in a big way following World War II, but I suspect it's been going on for much longer than that, probably many thousands of years, if not a good deal longer. Do you think that the CIA and other intelligence agencies still have the fix in the wiring of media such as the New York Times, CBS, and so forth? I think they do. I haven't seen any real change in media policy about this in the United States anyway. So I think there is still a large, very strong tendency to try to keep the subject under wraps. But it's a question of whether they really have much credibility with the public anymore, because if you look at the public opinion polls, it's pretty clear that most people don't believe what the government is saying about the issue. So in a sense, they've already lost the battle, even though they continue fighting it using the old methods that they've had for so many years. But do you personally think that in our lifetime that the truth will finally come to the world, that we're not alone, that other advanced intelligences are here interacting with the Earth and have been for millennia? Well, you know, that's a good question. It depends on who you look to for your source of what is true. I mean, if you look to the political establishment, they're not very good at telling the truth about anything, much less UFOs. (laughs) So I, I think it's sort of against their nature to speak the truth about almost anything. But I see this as a a microcosm of a much broader political problem in the United States right now, which is 
a battle for an open society. There's a battle going on between people who want to continue an open democratic society and those who want to try to suppress that. We see this manifesting in a lot of other issues outside the UFO area, but the UFOs are part of that whole problem of secrecy in government and unwillingness to run our country in a democratic fashion. And tell the truth. And tell the truth. That's right. In 1966, the CBS network aired a so-called documentary entitled UFOs, Friend, Foe, or Fantasy, narrated by Walter Cronkite. The documentary debunked the UFO phenomenon. Terry Hansen points out that shortly after the CBS broadcast, one of the CIA Robertson Panel's astronomers, Thornton Page, Ph.D., wrote a letter to the Robertson Panel secretary, Fred Durant. Dr. Thornton admits in the letter that he, quote, helped organize the CBS TV show around the Robertson panel's conclusions, unquote. The letter is dated September 8, 1966, and reads as if Dr. Thornton is dismissing the entire disk phenomenon as if it were meaningless. Here is the astronomer's entire letter, handwritten while he was riding on a New Haven, Connecticut train. Quote, Dear Fred, I remember Q-building and flying saucers well, have used the latter to teach astronomy students since 1958, and helped organize the CBS TV show around the Robertson Panel conclusions, plus more recent student interests. The sociological aspects still intrigue me, particularly the eastward drift of UFO activity around the world and the god-angel image transferred to UFO crews. It's too bad that the U.S. Air Force still is accused of, quote, holding something back, unquote, and that this, quote, serious business, unquote, is a bestseller. For more information about the news media complicity and the UFO cover-up, Terry Hansen's book, The Missing Times, can be ordered directly from the book's electronic publisher, Libris Online Bookstore. The hot link, phone numbers, and hard mail address are given in my earthfiles.com report at www.earthfiles.com. Terry Hansen's important book is also available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble Books. Thanks for listening to this Earth Files podcast from the edges of science, environment, and real X-Files. Go to www.earthfiles.com to see more than a thousand Earth Files reports with photographs, drawings, and documents. And visit Earth Files every day, every week, for new reports and new podcasts. That's www.earthfiles.com. 